We're going to hear from Jack Layton. They want to hear what he's going to do as official opposition leader. Uh, what do you think he's going to, what are some of the themes, Nick Bontis, that he's going to pick up on in his speech? What are you listening for from Jack? I think he's definitely going to talk about keeping uh, the Conservatives in check. He's definitely going to be pushing the, uh, the, the standard NDP agenda with regards to families, which is the, the word that he used throughout the campaign. He also talked about seniors and taking care of seniors. Um, just on the, on, the, on the May issue with regards to the Green Party, I think that's actually fantastic news for this country to actually have a parliamentarian who will always keep the voice strong for the environment. I think that's a good thing as well, Nick. I've never Alan, heard before in no, Canadian politics. No. It was such a reversal, and we've seen that reversal in the numbers this evening. Uh, the good news is that none of that was predictable. Yeah, it makes uh, the election exciting. It makes Canadian politics exciting. Um, with regards to advertising, that's one thing, is you're actually paying for an ad. But let's also talk about the media in terms of the release of certain information. And in particular, I'm talking about the whole massage fiasco for Layton. Uh, in the end, that only happened, you know, what, 48 hours, 72 hours before the actual date that we were going to vote. Turned out that it did not affect him. Turned out that it did not affect his party. Question is, who or what party was the one that actually helped launch that particular thing? But in the end, the good news is that the Canadian electorate is sophisticated. They looked past that. They looked at Layton's other qualities in terms of his support for family pushing for seniors. I also think that Leighton is a fantastic orator. He speaks very Obama-esquely, and I think the Canadians responded to that. Thanks, Thanks Nick. Once again, uh, Nick, I'll pick it up with you. You didn't get a chance to weigh in. We're waiting for Jack Layton to speak. Alan's already said what he expects to hear. What do you expect to hear now? Uh, be careful what you wish for. You wanted this for the longest time. You have over 100 seats now. You got a sea of orange in Ottawa. You got to make sure to rally the team. You are the leader of the party. You have a bunch of subordinates in terms of MPs who are probably ill-equipped to play in this particular game. So I think in terms of onboarding and orientation, you know, the old 100 days strategy, that's what he needs to do for the first 100 days. Make sure that his team is ready to go. Uh, don't try to do too much against the Conservatives, you know, because they've got the power right now, but just make sure that you play the role of opposition leader accurately. Let's look at Alan. the new makeup of the new Democratic caucus, uh, about 100 or so members, 60 percent or so of those are from Quebec, and you think they're just Francophones? Well, no, I was going to say about uh, of the 104, about 60 coming from Quebec. So 60 of the 104, uh, these are MPs. Many of them are rookie MPs, which I've spoken about earlier in terms of the orientation to the process of the House. But in terms of Francophones as well, many of them don't speak English. And if they, don't, if they do, they don't speak English that well. So in addition to the issue of understanding how to operate in Ottawa, we're also going to have this opportunity of people who uh, just don't speak English that well. If you want to get a job, go to Ottawa. There's a 60 MP from the NDP from Quebec who need to learn how to speak English well so job opportunity for you <laughs> oh yeah for sure that, that'll be a good idea there Nick uh, let's take a live shot in Calgary turn out what do you think it's going to take to try to reinvigorate the vote and try to get more people out and more people to care about our democracy well, we keep uh, talking about Web 2.0, and I'm going to harp on that again. Um, although the, uh, some inroads were definitely made by by Layton, uh, he can probably attribute some of his uh, some of his victories towards it. But generally speaking, in terms of the, all the parties, I think a very poor job was done. Uh, we need to learn from the Americans in terms of engaging the electorate, which I don't think we did enough of. Um, with regards to um, the uh, Gen Y and Net Geners, the 19 to 34 year olds, let's say, um, you know, they may have been engaged with Twitter and YouTube and Facebook, but evidently, you know, if we went down to 55% for voter turnout, they ended up not coming to the polls. So that's another problem. Uh, although we saw a little bit of momentum across university campuses for all the vote mobs, uh, it could have been just, you know, nice, simple smartphone activity and not physically getting out there. Aging populations, they have to kind of make their appeal to the older generation as well, too. But you've got to bridge this old versus yeah. young as well. And they seem to sort of struggle to spread their message out, don't they? Well, it's, it's not just the age of the voters. It's also the age of the MPs here. I mean, we have to look at the profile of the people that are going to end up in Ottawa right now. And we we're talking about the literal, the liberals and how they've been decimated. But, you know, Justin, uh, he actually ended up winning. Uh, so he's still the MP. Now, at you know, he's in his late 30s. He's still a little bit green. Not Green Party, but Green. Uh, it's going to take at least four years, as you guys said, for the Liberals to recover. Maybe in eight years' time, Justin Trudeau will be about 48, 49 years old. That could be the dawning of the resurgence of the Liberal Party. That Trudeau name still wields big, big brand, not only in Canada, but around the world. So I don't think the Liberals are dead by any means. Henry, what me? Merci beaucoup. Good night, my friends. Good night, my friends. God bless all of you. God keep our land glorious and free. So there you have it. That is Prime Minister Stephen Harper rallying the troops at the TELUS Center tonight. He's uh, showing perhaps more emotion than we've ever seen from him as he's finally achieved what he was looking for, a majority conservative government. Going to take a quick last thought from each member of our panel, Nick Bontis. 
What do you think right now? It's happened 166. So great news. Uh, one very simple message to uh, the new prime minister, who is the current prime minister. This is the loony. Canada has voted. Please take care of our economy. Keep the dollar strong. Keep the interest rates low. And let's start getting a better handle on household debt in Canada because a lot of families can't afford it. Mr. Harper, I know you can do it.